Hey everyone. As part of Laura's 10 Maker project, I was tasked with creating some bunk beds for the guest room for people are staying at her new workshop. The first challenge was the height of the ceiling. I wanted to make triple bunk beds and this proved to be a bit of a tight squeeze, um, especially when they're stacked one on top of another. The solution is to have the middle bed at right angle to the top and bottom bunk. However, this took up quite a lot of space in the room. So then I thought, what if the second bunk could swing out? So it could be used as either a two or a three maker bed, depending on who's there. One of my favourite things about this project was the amount of amazing people on hand to help out. Kel was always willing to lend his muscles and Hassan had this big sick truck to go and get all the materials. Now if you told me I was going to build this bed mostly using battery powered tools, I would have told you to go do one. But me and this chop saw became very close friends over the three days it took to build the bed. Just a simple half lap joint for the bed frames. These 2x8s are a little bit overkill, but this bed wants to be big and chunky. Circular saw is usually one of my go-to tools in the hack shack, and to have a battery powered one that gave pretty much the same power was amazing. Now I'm not going to be beating Macrimonia in any joinery competitions, but I've got a better beard, so what are you going to do? This palm sander was pretty much the only corded tool I used for the project. I didn't want to go too crazy with the sanding, just want to take off any rough edges. Because of the metric system over in Germany, the timber sizes were a little bit different, so I ended up using these pretty much 2x3s for the slats, which is a little bit on the chunky side, but I'd rather have the strength and rigidity, especially with the moving aspect of the bed. Shop, shop my ass. Oh hey, that's my boy. I was wondering when you'd show up. Just going to try a little dry fit assembly uh, on Ellen's lovely bench that she made. All three bunks are pretty much the same construction. It's just that they have to be different sizes because of the way they nest. I don't want to glue the entire bed together in case it needs to be taken apart, but I do want to glue and screw the rails in place when I take it upstairs. Steve's a big guy. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure on a finish for the bed at this point, so it was time to ask for some advice. Guys! What? Oh, is he red? Oh, yeah, he's, he's in a dark place. He's in a dark place. Dark place. Dark place. Brett, what colour do you reckon we should do these legs? Black! Alright. Oh, black! Alright. Charring the wood not only makes it smell delicious, but it also gives it a little bit more durability to the pine, which is a little bit on the soft side. Although spending an entire afternoon doing this to all the legs was a bit of a stupid idea on the hottest day ever recorded in Germany. And remember to stay hydrated folks, building is thirsty work. Ooh. And now for assembly time. Each joint gets four 6mm by 80mm screws that are counter sunk in and each leg gets five screws to help stop any twisting. Now this is enough to help support the weight, but I did notice when people started using the bed that different parts got different stresses. So for instance, when people started climbing up the ladders, that took more stress, and then when people started climbing off, it would be over one leg. So I think that's gonna need some additional support. The ladders isn't too bad because the frame itself actually screws into the ladders to help support the weight, but on the back legs, I think I'm going to add in some sort of corbels to help support the upper bunk. Now, if you haven't got a Steve clamp, just a regular sledgehammer will do. So in order for the middle bunk to swing out, one of the legs has to be a false leg, and this is supported by two feet on either side of the bottom bunk. Now when it comes to getting things level, I couldn't give a bubble, so it's worth getting an actual adult in at points like this to make sure that things are straight. The ladder is made out of the same 2x3s as the slats and it goes in between the front legs to help tie the whole bed together and it also actually helps support the top bunk which gets screwed in from the inside. 
Well, we're in Germany. Yeah. Oh, milk tastes funny. Yeah, you're definitely going to die of some sort. Just a few coats of poly on some of the high traffic areas is all the finishing it needs. I got these gate hinges to use for the pivot point. Now they don't actually support any of the weight as the legs are touching the floor with some felt feet, but they were just a little bit too long so I needed to uh, cut them off and drill some countersink some new holes. So in order for the bed to swing over, as I said, you have to remove the false foot and then just swing it through 90 degrees and it slots back into another foot that's in the back corner. Just wanted to add one feature to the foot just to ensure that it was easy for people to assemble and that was almost kind of like a registration pin. Now I did try to show some restraint and not spray paint the whole thing green but I did want to add just a little bit of colour and I thought it'd be nice to have it hidden under the leg. What are you actually using? Uh, basically... the 10 makers bunk beds and um, it doesn't quite fit 10 people but let's go grab the boys sling some mattresses in and see if they like the new beds maybe someone can read us a bedtime story seeing how the friendly ghost isn't sponsoring this video we bought our own mattresses and because they're only super thin and um, we just put some board down to help spread the weight over the slats An angle grinder, also known as a side grinder or disc grinder, is a handheld power tool used for grinding. The motor drives a geared head at the right angle on which is mounted an abrasive disc or a printer cutoff disc. Either of which can be replaced when worn. The backing system is typically made of hard plastic, phenolic resin, or medium hard rubber depending on the amount of flexibility desired. Good night, boys. Good night. Good night. Good night. The next video in the 10 Maker series is Hollywood Steve's over at Moonshine Metalworks, so be sure to go over his channel and check out his video. Bye!